Thanks for getting in touch today. Uh, we'll reflect everything that you're talking about now as we go to the top stories uh, of the morning. And uh, we've got Matthew Wright and India Willoughby with uh, those two. Guys, very good to see you. Morning. Um, it's, it's, Morning. Uh, it's back to school in Scotland. It's back to school in Northern Ireland today, uh, England and Wales um, next week. Uh, is it time, Matthew, to be back at school? I think um, it probably is. Uh, I think we can. Uh, it was very interesting listening to Professor Carl set up uh, his uh, his view just a few minutes ago. I think the, there are two issues for me, uh, and they're probably related. Why? Uh, why, for example, I think it was at the end of July, where some government departments, ministries, only had two percent of the workforce back at work. So we're asking schools to do stuff that government departments themselves aren't doing. And I think the overarching concern is about trust, trust in government, trust in Boris. And I think that there's something like one in three parents in England are still reluctant to send their kids back to school in September. And I think there's nothing, very little anything can be done at the moment to persuade those parents otherwise, other than some kind of leadership from number 10. Well, India, uh, the Prime Minister says nothing will have a greater effect on the life chances of our children than them returning to school. Would you agree? Absolutely. I think the choice now for parents uh, and pupils is either be thick or be sick. You've got to take the chance and, uh, and go back. Um, it's going to have a greater long-term impact on your life if you don't have the qualifications. There's also the social aspect as well. Social skills are so important. And I was reading today that the latest research, they've done studies in, in Japan, in South Korea, China, the Netherlands is the latest one, and only 10% of primary spreaders are children. So well, we, should remember, we should remember there are thousands and thousands of adults who work in schools, and all we're hearing at the moment is the concerns about children and how Correct. that's not a major uh, concern. They, they don't seem to spread coronavirus. They're less likely to die from coronavirus. But we hear very little about all the adult workers, the teachers, the cooks, the cleaners, and what's being done to protect them. OK, right, you two. Um... I'm, I'm, I'm not being presumptuous we'll be here, but here. I, well, I know Matthew's <laughs> over 50. I'm not sure about India, but um, but uh, let's say, let's say you'll not see 50 again either, the two of you. Um, and there's a survey that that has come out and says that uh, a third of people begin to feel invisible after they turn um, 50, and by the time you get to 57, forget it. India, do you think this is an ageist country or society? Not at all. I think age is out the window to a large respect these days. I mean, if you look how I'm dressed today and your good selves as well, Ruth and Amy, you know, so stylish and chic and Matthew as well. If you compare our 50 to the previous generation, it's completely different. We have better health. We look after ourselves. We exercise. I think in terms of branding and advertising as well, obviously, when you get to 50, for a lot of people, you know, the mortgage is paid off. The children have left off. It's a time to relax. Maybe in just in I, I get all that. I get all that. But you're not working for a big corporate company, and would you be at your age? Um, in terms, well, it's an interesting point you raised there, Eamon, because obviously we've gone into a, uh, a period of history which is probably going to be high unemployment. And if you look at fifty from that respect, I was chatting to somebody uh, last week who actually works in the recruitment business. And they, if you're 50 or over, you're not hired. It's as simple as that. Right. Yeah, and that's Indeed, the, uh, that's the, the over 50s now face the over 50s now face the greatest prospect of long-term unemployment. Uh, apart from the good sales at this morning, my phone remains pretty quiet these days. Suicide. Now we all know. I hope we all know that suicide is a major cause of death uh, amongst the early 40s. Well, in 2018, it was mirrored by uh, those in their uh, not, uh, 50 to 54. I think it's a very, very difficult time. I'm coming up to uh, just past 55. We live in an, a society that celebrates youth and beauty. Uh, India and myself, and I, I, I dare say Ruth and Eamon have all applied makeup today in part to look like our most youthful version of ourselves. Some of us with more success than others. <laughs> Uh, last night of the proms, Rule Britannia and Land of Hope and Glory could be axed. The BBC could drop the songs because of their alleged links with colonialism and slavery, Matthew. Uh, do you think many people think about the words when they're singing Land of Hope and Glory? What do you think of this one? Um, I think we, sh we, we should think about the words we sing, because otherwise we might be sending out all kinds of dodgy messages. 
I think we've been aware for a while that uh, Land of Hope and Glory is a song about the empire. It was commissioned uh, by Edward VII. And what I think is interesting here is that it was originally just music. It was Edward VII that asked Elgar to provide words, and he, he sought a lyricist. If there weren't lyrics originally, rather than ban one of the greatest sort of melodies that I'm aware of, why not rewrite the lyrics? Why not drop the, the celebratory empire tone and bring people together rather than plough down a furrow where we either keep the song and we upset a section of society, or we ban the song and we upset a section of society? We've got to find some kind of compromise to bring people together. Well, it's funny you say, you know, rewrite the lyrics, but you can't reinvent history. <laughs> the empire happened. It did, but we don't have to celebrate it. Yeah. Um, uh, OK, but please, you know what I find strange please, about what you're please. saying, Matthew? What I find strange is, um, right, diss and do down the British Empire, fine, um, but revere the Roman Empire or the Greek Empire. We don't sing any anthems for them at the proms, though, do okay, we? OK, fair enough, yeah. Okay. We don't wave the Union Jack uh, 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 and, and repeat those lyrics then. That doesn't happen. India? Look, what is wrong with the Empire? I'm a massive fan of the Empire. The Empire did a lot of good all around the world. A lot of the things they actually brought to countries have been copied and they're still in place now. The Empire is a great thing. Britain is a great country. And if you look at it in the whole, we have done more good than bad. The BBC, they're acting as if Land of Hope and Glory is relaxed by Frankie Goes to Hollywood. It's absolutely ridiculous. I don't think the majority of people in the country are offended by Land of Hope and Glory, Rule Britannia. Rule Britannia, Britain will never be slaves. Never be slaves. Well, how more explicit can you be? It was originally written, actually, when the British were fighting the French and the Jacobites. That's what it's about. It came at the same time as the Boer War, when we got loads of mineral rights by invading a country and putting its people to death. That's why it was written. OK, so, OK. So Matthew, you're not living in that era. We're living in the now. If we, if we so keep we going back... and people, people that are descended from that era. Happened, right, I'm going to I'm gonna have to put a full stop. Forward. I'm going to have to put a full stop on you. <laughs> full stop on you both in that one. Uh, because a, a debate has broken out on social media over the use of full stops. Um, a tweet said, older people, do you realise that ending oh. a sentence with a full... That's you, yeah, Matthew, that's you. Ending a sentence with a full stop comes across as sort of abrupt <laughs> and unfriendly to younger people in an email or chat. Genuinely curious, this person said. One... Why do you use the full stop? The, the wonderful thing about this is the people that complain about it seem to be totally unaware of the fact that they sound like the worst kind of fascists going around telling people what they can and cannot do, inventing new laws and then forcing them on people. I hope for once India and I can kiss and, kiss and make up and agree on this one. Absolutely. You know, you know we're, again, we're, we're having a girl, a generation that's used to good grammar, you know, the way of doing things. Yeah. Properly, you know, they've survived the blitz, they've survived the base city rollers, all these terrible things that have happened in the history. And now we get these snowy flakes who are coming in and just saying it's all preposterous. I'll give them a clap because apparently they don't like clapping either. <laughs> <laughs> well, so it says that because they, they, young people have grown up, you know, communicating on their phones, they send each kind of thought as a separate message. They don't, so once the message is sent, that to them is, is the full stop. Yeah, and that, that's their flow, isn't it? They've invented these new rules and they're trying to apply them to everybody else. I, I'm kind of inspired, actually, by some of the conversations I've had in days gone by with India. I now apply a World War II test to these kind of stories. Would we be doing this in the middle of World War II, worrying about full stops being rude? I think we all know the answer to that is no. Full stop. And also, <laughs> I mean, all of us being involved in newspapers and having to write for a living, how could you actually read text without punctuation. punctuation yeah. I've seen, have you tried James Joyce's Ulysses? There's a whole chapter of just, <laughs> well, it's very difficult, very Maybe difficult. I missed, I missed that one. I must have been the <laughs> dentist the day we did Ulysses. <laughs> Didn't, do that that Didn't do that. Didn't do that one. Well, no. there you go. Thank, Thank you, you guys. Thank you both very much indeed. Pleasure. Appreciate it. Thank you. Full stop. Bye-bye.